Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Cask Theology, a channel about theology and beer. And today we've got a new format and we've got a new series of videos for you. And that is all about beer cocktails. Now beer cocktails are essentially the answer to the question of, I like this and I like this. What would happen if I put them together? Generally, these beer cocktails are not made by the brewery themselves. They've happened outside of it, where people have got a bottle of someone's beer and thought, I wonder what it would taste like if I mixed it with this. Humans have always done this. We're still sticking weird flavors and things in there, but beer cocktails is just one way that, well, drinkers have done this over the years. Today, I thought we'd tackle the Shandy Gaff, which uh, seems to be the precursor to all the non-alcoholic beers and beverages that we can see in pubs and bars today. So we're gonna do that in three ways. We'll look at the history, then we'll look at the ingredients, and then we'll make one. So without further ado, let's hit the title card thing and go through the history of Shandy Gaff. Now, originally I was gonna start this series with the Shandy, which is a popular UK beer cocktail that we tend to drink in the summer months. But then when I was doing my research for this, I noticed that the word shandy, it was actually a contraction of the word shandy gaff. And I thought, what's a shandy gaff? So I did a bit of research. The word shandy gaff first appears in an 1853 novel by Cuthbert Bede. And it appears in his novel, The Adventures of Verdant Green. Now in this novel, we don't really get to find out what this beer is, but we only find out that it's really good. So we're gonna to need to go a bit further afield to find out what this beer was. And that is where a certain Herbert George Wells comes into the picture. Yes, that's right, H.G. Wells, the guy that gave us the War of the Worlds, the time machine, and the Invisible Man. Yeah, that guy. You see, he wasn't just a science fiction writer. Science fiction wasn't really a thing back then. So he wrote a variety of different things. One of the novels he wrote was called The History of Mr. Polly, which was a comedy. Mr. Polly is not a great person and he ends up having all sorts of misadventures. But during these misadventures, he ends up making Shandy Gaff and H.G. Wells gives us, us the recipe. Fantastic. So according to H.G. Wells, the recipe for Shandy Gaff is as follows. You take two bottles of beer and you take some ginger beer and you put it in a large round bottomed mug, jug. Which isn't really helpful, is it? So in this next section, why don't we just do a bit of theorizing and figure out what beer H.G. Wells could have been referring to for this drink. Let's run through some beer styles and tick them off as we go through to figure out what he meant when he said two bottles of beer. First off, I think we can discount lager. Lager, although it was around in the 1800s, wasn't very popular in the UK. In fact, it didn't become popular in the UK until about the 1970s or so. And that's when it became the juggernaut it is now. Plus, you know, it's kind of 100 or so years too late. Next up, we have stouts and porters. Now, I don't think he meant stouts and porters, although he might have done, but he uses the word beer. And generally, I think if he meant a specific style, he would have said stout or porter. Now, maybe in the future, I'll make one of these with a stout or a porter, and you can all have a laugh at me as I try it. Uh, but for now, I don't think that's what H.G. Wells was referring to when he was talking about beer. So what other styles were around about then? Well, there was mild. But in 1800s, mild was not a beer style. That would come later. In the 1800s, Mild referred to a newness of a beer, and it could be used in conjunction with other beers. So you could have a mild porter or a mild stout, for example. It was more of a description of how fresh the beer was. So I think we can discount that, especially since he's saying bottles. And that leads me to the final one, the final beer that we could, that we could use. And that beer is, of course, the pale ale. That's right, the pale ale. Now I'm not talking IPA here, so I'm not talking something that's gonna be say eight or so percent and super hoppy. 
And I'm talking about bitters. Now bitters, they were called bitters by the punters who back in the day, there was no marketing or none of these big fonts on the bar. So they just say, oh, give me a pint of the bitter stuff. But that was the punter's name for it. The brewers called it pale ale because they used pale malts. And that is my candidate for which beer H.G. Wells is referring to. So we've got the ingredients, pale ale and ginger beer. So I think there's only one thing left to do, isn't there? I think it's time to make one of these things. Shall we? Ah, look at this. Through the magic of YouTube, here's some bits and bobs I prepared earlier. So, what have I got? I've got a generic ginger beer, just from Tesco. No added sugar, it's just ginger beer. You can get it in pretty much any shop. Let's just adjust the hair. Now, interestingly enough, the ginger beers in H.G. Wells' day may have been alcoholic in nature because it was only just being made at that point and we hadn't quite perfected the art of taking alcohol out of things although we were starting to in the 1800s with things like wine and of course ginger beers like this. Now the beer that I've got is a traditional bitter, Banks is bitter. This one's been around for quite a while. When is it from? Do, 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 do. Doesn't say but it's been around for ages. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Now if you're in the UK, you can obviously pick up a pint of uh, Banks's, or you can get some Doom Bar or some Bombardier. They'll work just as well. But if you're a further afield and you're not in the UK and you want to try this ancient beer cocktail from the 1800s, then look for an English style bitter, either amber or brown in colour, and it needs to be no more than 4% ABV. Any English style bitter should do, not an IPA because they're a bit too strong, but yes, an English style bitter, that'll do the trick. So without further ado, let's stop mucking about and uh, get on with it. So as I said, we're going to start off and we're going to get, going to do a third. There you go, third to line. And a third of ginger beer, there we go. Now with all these shandies and cocktails, when I've got something fizzy in the glass, I'm gonna put something like a beer in it to prevent it going all over the place and just over fizzing and acting like a bottle of champagne that was shaken up. I always give the, uh, the fizzier part of it just a little swirl. And that ensures that when I pour this beer into there, it's not gonna go everywhere. Do it at work, ideal for when you're doing it in draft. So. I've got my bottle of Banks's. Let's get that cracked open. I have tried this with uh, a chilled one. This is slightly chilled. It's not too bad. So let's make this uh, cocktail 45 degrees and just gently pour in because that will stop it from going all explodey on us. Well, there we have it. Look at that. Uh, that's quite hazy. And I'll just give it a bit of a stir just to get them ingredients working together. And there we have it, a shandy gaff. So, yeah, that's what it looks like. Ginger beer and beer. But this is YouTube, isn't it? So I need to drink this thing for your amusement. <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest, I'm quite curious myself. So let's try an old beer cocktail from the 1800s and see how we get on. Hmm. That's not half bad, actually, I can see why well, the folks in the 1800s did this. It's actually quite refreshing. Sure, it's a bit cloudy, but uh, on a summer's day, this could be very good. The ginger beer and the, and the beer, it doesn't really, well, yeah, 
the ginger beer tends to overpower the, the flavour of the beer somewhat. I'm not really getting much hoppiness or bitterness out of it. I'm mostly getting ginger beer. Maybe with a bit less, that might uh, alter the balance of it. But, you know, we went with the recipe we had. But, yeah, there we go. That's Shandigaf, a beer cocktail from the 1800s that preceded all of those uh, Bex Blues and Heineken Zeros and Peroni 0% alcohols that you can find in shops and uh, mm, pubs today. So, if you want the next episode of this, well, somewhere around here-ish, I'll have uh, that episode if I've done it, and YouTube reckons you'd probably like that one there. But until next time, grab yourself a shandy gaff and keep asking questions. And I'll see you in the next one.